You are, come on, you are alive. Hey guys, welcome to All Things Film. I am Joe from Girls Goring Gin, and tonight we're going to be talking about Christmas horror party massacres and movies and Christmas and stuff, and Miguel's over here to save me because this isn't my show. I don't know why I'm here except for candy. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> and I had to make her do double duty, not only being uh, a guest, but also host for just a little bit, just a little bit by yourself. I get paid in candy, so I'm always happy to be here. Thank you. You're great. But um, we don't have a friggin' uh, producer, producer of any kind tonight, and because this scene is green screen, my camera's like here, Peter's over there, and I didn't think ahead of time to turn it this way. It would have been so much smarter, probably. We made it. Probably, you know, It smarter. looked good on, on the other end, so. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to check it out on here. Uh, if it looks good on here, too, then we're like, flipping did it, and I'm going to the wrong page. Oops. <laughs> but uh, the reason that Joe is joining me today is twofold. Um, one, because I like when Joe's around. She's a good person. She's good I'm people. okay sometimes. So She's awesome. candy. As long as there's candy. Oh my as long goodness. as there's candy or whiskey, I am a happy mama. <laughs> but um, the other reason is because we are working on a film, which technically kind of, sort of, maybe goes along with the theme of what's behind us today. Yes. And that is Christmas. Because we are doing the movie Christmas Party Massacre, and I am, I am super excited that you're going to be in it. I'm excited to be in it, and thank you for having me here tonight. I'm super excited. I <laughs> cannot. I'm really glad you are here. And then I'm going to go ahead and check the other sites because there are people watching, and I don't know where you guys are watching from right now. Um, if you guys can all do me a favor, and if you're watching, check in on All Things Film. Mm -hmm. If you're all watching there, it makes it super easy for me tonight. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go ahead and do a vote for what you think would be the best way to die in a Christmas movie. Yes. And I didn't really, we didn't specify, but just Christmas movie in general, like, how the Grinch stole Christmas, how'd you get murdered in that? No, no, just. But how many, what, nobody dies in the Grinch, though. They I could. mean, there are, there are Halloween, or no, I'm, I'm sorry, excuse, excuse me, I love Halloween, excuse me. There are, uh, what would they call them, like, dark Christmas movies, like, Black, Black Christmas. Oh, yeah. That one came out. Oh, like 10 years ago, maybe? Oh, that was, yeah, it's quite a while. And there's, um, Santa Slay. There's been a bunch of horror yeah. Christmas movies. In fact, if you guys can let us know what your favorite horror Christmas movie is in the comments below, that would be awesome. Yes. Um, Krampus was not too long ago. Well, that was okay. Krampus was okay. Was okay. I, um, Netflix. I love that Netflix kind of goes with the holidays and that they show you so many, like, I guess you would call them kind of B, B rated or independent type films like they're not big hollywood made oh yeah indie, movies indie movies yeah. indie movies and they have a lot of things like that like uh, mother krampus is one of the ones that's on i want to say it's <laughs> netflix i have netflix and hulu so sometimes i get a little mixed but mother krampus that mother one i have krampus. not heard of yet no it's i swear I th i'm pretty sure it's on netflix not hulu um but yeah I, I just i love it because you don't see a lot of uh like scary christmas type movies or horror Christmas movies so it is cool when Netflix puts all that stuff out so you can't oh. see things like that oh yeah and Netflix I mean I'm not the biggest fan of Netflix as far as like filmmaking side goes just because they're not so great to um, independence mm -hmm. um, but they do do a good job of showing like hey this is the time of year you want to see some some Christmas murder mm -hmm. here's some Christmas murder for you we got you <laughs> yeah they are, they are awesome that way and I just got to check the other ones mm -hmm. um, Brett thank you for checking in with us man hope you're having a good day and and that's it. And that we're is, going home. <laughs> call it. I'm I'm swear to God, guys, I'm trying to keep up with both sides of this conversation, and I don't want to leave you guys out of it because um, this is the first time I got to talk with someone on any of the shows about the movie, other than sitting there talking to myself about it, which is always fun too. But I really do appreciate y'all checking in so far. Yes. Including over on the Christmas Massacre page. Uh, Jen says, Joe, you're so pretty, and oh, I would have to agree you. with her very much. Thank you. I washed, washed my hair today. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Yeah. So, you, you, we can give this a little bit of a spoiler okay. away. You are going to get to murder some people. Well, it's, I've read it three times already. I think I get to murder quite a few people. It's all kind of a couple <laughs> people. I mean, it, when, once people got on board, and this wasn't, I, I thought we were going to do like a five minute, like right. one person gets killed, and oh, movie's over, like funny thing, real quick. Totally just wanted to release it for Christmas um, and let that be the end of it. Something short, something mm -hmm. sweet. But when so many people hopped on board and they're really interested and so many people want to come from different parts of California mm -hmm. to be a part of this, I couldn't help but continue to write. 
and I knew who I wanted my killers to be right away as soon as people started like jumping on mm -hmm. and I was really happy that you messed like you better not get a part of my fucker yeah uh, I was like, like yeah. you better yeah I want to kill somebody in a movie like this is what I stra like this is one of my goals before I die one was to be in a horror movie one was to die in a horror movie and one was to be the killer in a horror movie I've already died in a horror movie. Boom. So, but I guess like the horror movie thing could, you know, like the, the first one I said, you know, being in a horror movie, that could just be, I guess, generalized into the other two categories. But I just wanted to be one in, be in one period. That's all I wanted to do. Doing that, yeah. But now I've already died and I get to kill people. I'm so Boom. excited. And I get to make tasty shanks. Don't give away too much. No. Tasty shanks. No, that's I, make the, I make these every Christmas, though. Cool. <laughs> she, she has already stabbed three people at the studio, but that's okay. We don't. We don't need all those people. It's not sharpened yet. Don't watch your tongue, sir. How fast can you actually sharpen one of those? Less than ten minutes. I don't believe you. Let's, let's see. No, get let's it. See it. We'll do it. He's Starting gonna time. time it. Time right it's, now. We're a little lap, so. so we're the, yeah, yeah. We're at six minutes on here. I can't. I can't so let's see if she can actually do this, guys. Yeah. And if you can do me a favor, I cannot because of Facebook jail and the fact that I don't know which page to share this from. If you guys can help us out tonight and give us the share. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook is always like the worst for me at least. They always kicking me off of groups. Over blocking you for like a week, over sharing two things. It's like I don't, I don't know how to fix ridiculous. that. I wish I did. I wish I could make it work, guys, but I totally don't know how. And um, yeah, for those of you tuning in with us, yeah, we are talking Christmas party master tonight. Um, something that just started literally with two Facebook posts. That was I was I was excited when I saw that. Yeah, that's that's all that took it to get this movie going to where it's at right now, and I'm really happy about that. Um, we've got a lot of people that are ones that we've worked with before and a lot of new people, mm -hmm. not just here in town, but um, all over. Uh, Julie is, I believe, further central California. Julie Ann is one, okay. of, uh, one of our other stars of this. Uh, Arizona is also coming further, further north. And a couple of actors, or actresses, excuse me, are coming from L.A., uh, Ren and Megan, mm -hmm, who that's right. I've had the chance to work with before on movies, so I'm really excited about that, guys. And... Um, we have quite a few people from different aspects of just, not just um, acting, but just people who want to get involved in something finally. And that was the idea behind this anyways, just something that everyone can hop on and not exclude anyone. Because everyone can get murdered. We can yeah. film that real quick. <laughs> and then that, that's the movie. That's the entire plot. Yeah. It's just people die. And are there, finally it pops up for me at least. Oh, okay. The, now you got that little poll going. The poll's going. So if you guys see that, I'm going to go ahead and vote. Which one would you vote for? How would I? Best way to die in a Christmas movie. Mm, I would say Christmas tree, honestly. Christmas tree. All right, uh -huh. then we're gonna go and fail that Christmas tree. Hopefully, hopefully we win. I want to see. Yeah, I'm curious to see which one's gonna win. Oh, totally, totally curious. Those are all kind of messed up ways to die. Yeah, but they're festive, you know. So, right. Yeah. So one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time is Gremlins. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's super dark and sci-fi and I love that but it's still very much Christmas because of everything and all the decorations and oh my god it's Christmas you can't have this happen or oh don't don't keep the family out of their home evil bank lady it's Christmas <laughs> I love that we're I gonna go adopt part. a gremlin and we're gonna do all the things we're not supposed to do with it and suck it on you boom and that's exactly how the whole movie goes yeah. um, but what would be one of your favorite Christmas movies if you could pick one right now it doesn't have to be horror related just be a Christmas movie in general one that I watch every year at Christmas time is Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs. I watched it. I've watched it almost consistently every year for about ten years on Christmas. That's that's pretty damn consistent. I love Quentin Tarantino movies. Yeah. Okay. I love Quentin Tarantino. Now, if you can help me with this one, because I've been trying to figure this out for a while, but I'm not willing to look it up because I don't okay. want to. I don't want to just have it spoiled. You can look anything up nowadays. Yeah. Or actually try to remember or find someone who knows this movie. There's one he made about a hotel, and there's a bellhop that visits the same room in different... They're basically like little shorts okay. put into one movie that all focus around this bellhop's experience at this hotel. But if anyone knows the friggin' name of that movie, that would be unbelievably what? helpful. And for some reason... I'm no. trying to think. I'm like not... I don't know. I thought you were going to say something like True Romance or something like that because a lot of people don't know that like he had a, a big deal to do with that. True Romance? No, I don't think I... Well, it's what? with um, Patricia Arquette and Christian Slater. I did not know he was involved in that. Yeah, he was involved in that. And actually, Brad Pitt was in that movie too. He was the stoner dude that like slept on the couch. What is that about? 
Um, Who's that? Well, Christian Slater works at a bookstore, and he's just kind of like this little hmm, guy, kind of keeps himself, has a roommate, stoner guy, and his boss kind of like hires this prostitute to kind of like perk him up a little bit. I think it's his birthday. It's been a while since I've seen this movie. I think it was his birthday or nice something. Nice boss. And then they, they end up like spending time together and stuff on this roof and everything, and it's just a weird, it's just kind of weird how they end up like liking each other and getting together. Kind of almost doesn't make sense. Maybe I just don't get that part, but they end up um, being together. Her pimp finds out, gets in trouble with the pimp, tries to take her away from the pimp. Pimps. All kinds of stuff's going on in this movie. Basically, he's just trying to save a, a hoe from a pimp because he found true love. That's that's sweet. It's beautiful. It's a so beautiful it, movie. It sounds like a better version of Pretty Woman, really. I liked it better than Pretty Woman. Because her pimp never even shows up. Like, yeah. He's like neglectful. Jesus. Pearl. Apparently, because uh, you, you never hear about it. Obviously, he doesn't take inventory very well, mm-hmm. or often. Well, it wasn't spoiled. It was, that was the salmonella part of his inventory right there. Fucking turkeys. Which is exactly what's in the, in the polls right there. I went for that. Uh, Jenna says that Gremlins is total a uh, total Christmas movie. It really is. It, uh, it automatically yes. is, not just because it's in Christmas, but I think that really embodies the Christmas spirit, guys. Uh, fighting little, um, not demons... But little, little monsters, yeah. <laughs> I think that's exactly what Christmas is really supposed to be all about. And Bill says, what's up? Bill, how you doing tonight? Hope you're having a good one. And guys, I promise I'm trying to keep these damn comments. This is killing me. Try not to cut the inside of my mouth with Stacy Shake. You're actually doing a lot faster than I thought you were. I um... Well, I'm talking too, so I'm not like consistently on this thing right now. Oh, fair enough, uh, yeah. But it is going a lot quicker than I thought you would do. So I'm pretty proud of you. Thanks. And... Um, Go ahead, one more share for that guy. And this one's cherry, by the way. Is it cherry? Is that, yeah. what, is that what we figured out? I don't know how they get cherry out of uh, blue, yellow, green, and red stripes, but... That's to- totally cherry. It's cherry. It's not bad. That sounds like cherry to me any day of the week. Yes. <laughs> but then there's uh, there's uh, the debate over another movie that is, I say, one of the best Christmas movies ever. I say it was cute. Um, no, not, not, not nice. Um, oh. One of the best Christmas movies ever, Die Hard. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you said Ice Age. <laughs> I was like, oh. Um, no. There's a debate about it because even the cast and crew and what the heck's his face? Bruce Willis. Um, Bruce Willis says it's not a Christmas movie. They will shit. They're lying. Yeah, they're lying no. to the whole world. I love the Die Hard movies. Yeah. Those are awesome. Bruce Willis is <laughs> some shit. Yeah. <laughs> Probably my favorite movies of his. Although, uh, Shyamalan finally making good movies again. Have you seen the commercial for Glass? Yes, looked- I have. I knew you were getting to that. Because I liked Broken. Broken was good. Um, and then Split. Exterua, Exterua. I only seen part of it. <gasps> I gotta finish that. Oh my god! You have to. That one I think was better than. Um, oh, Unbreakable. That's what it was called. Unbreakable. It was better than Unbreakable. And then at the end, that movie didn't come out, but maybe a year or two ago. It's it's fairly Split, newish. Split's very new. Unbreakable was ooh, a while ago now. Yeah, so. but the thing is though, is when you watch Split, you don't know that it's connected to Unbreakable until like way at the end of the movie. Like I think you have to go past some of the credits and you pick up an extra little, a little, uh, a little nibble. Yeah, I only knew because someone told me like, oh my god, they're connecting the world. And I was like, yeah, that's genius. From what I've seen, mm-hmm. that's genius because I, I haven't finished the movie. I need to finish it. Oh my god, you need to watch it. It was such a good movie. And then I was like, oh man, I wonder if they're going to make any more of these movies. And as soon as I saw the preview for Glass, I sent it to my boyfriend. I was like, look, we're going to go see this. We're going to go see this. It looks really good. It looks better than a lot of um, superhero movies out there right now. Yeah. And it still has kind of like that horror aspects that, that Split had. It's almost like a, to me, it feels almost like an anti-superhero movie. I can or see Or an that. anti-hero movie. It's not I, superhero, but hero. Well, they'd be superheroes. Oh, That's he's definitely movie. a superhero. Yeah. yeah, he broke through the door. Just in the commercial alone. Um, I gotta rewatch Unbreakable actually because I don't remember how far his powers go in that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they're like super extravagant if I remember correctly. It doesn't. He doesn't do anything that suspends disbelief. Like not he's not Superman level crazy skills. Only but he with does some a things yeah. like as far as being injured and all that other stuff. He's you know a little resilient to yeah, that. He's so. unbreakable. Yeah. Yeah. Or else that'd be a terrible name if he was mm-hmm. unbreakable. But and Samuel L. Jackson is just such a great actor. I mean, don't get me wrong. So is Bruce Willis, but. I appreciate more of Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson's movies than I do Bruce Willis movies. Oh, yeah. And then you throw in, uh, I want to say it's Ian McGregor. Is is, mm. is, is that his name? No, it's... Um, Damn it. Oh my Other guy God. is Professor X. Yes. Damn it. His last name starts with an A. Act, not Acton. Acton? 
oh my god, James something. James McAvoy. Yeah, James, James McAvoy. McAvoy. Yeah. yeah so. I get those two confused because, uh, yeah, Magneto and, and mm -hmm. uh, Professor X, and they have weird names. Get some American names, guys. Come on, right? help me out. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, great actors. And no, McAvoy's performance in Split and a lot of stuff he's been in is just dominant. Awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, he really so is. awesome. It's, it's hard to describe him other than that, uh, which kind of leads me into the next part mm -hmm. of what made you want to do acting? Because it's, it's pretty tough. Um, well, I performed since I was a little kid, off and on throughout my life, not consistently, because it, it wasn't really something I originally wanted to do. I originally wanted to be a chef or a cartoonist. Very cool. Yeah, and actually I won an art scholarship when I was 18, and I decided to go off and take a job saving the world. But um, I still I still did a lot of drama in high school. Uh, my brother and I, growing up in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, once a week we went to a table a cable access television studio, hmm. and we did improv uh, show skits once a week. Cool. And then when we moved here, it, there at the time there really wasn't a lot going on as far as all that was. And, I didn't have access to it, so I just kind of left it alone for a little bit, and then when I got with you guys, I started doing it a little bit more again, so... Yeah, I'm glad, too, because you do a good job. Thank you. Do a you. good job. Hi, John. Um, <laughs> yeah, it seems that Bakersfield definitely doesn't have the same resources or um, the same amount of activities happening as, say, like San Francisco, right. the Bay Area, or even, you know, L.A., or any of the areas, really, Vegas, um... Fresno has quite a bit, but I think we're catching up pretty quickly ourselves. Okay. And um, there is more of a community, it feels like, here in Bakersfield, just it in does. the last couple of years, um, for filmmakers and for people who want to get into that stuff. Mm -hmm. And the only reason um, I'm actually doing a role in this movie, too, guys, uh, it was because I needed a character that I knew would be there and I knew I was going to show up. Because huh. you know, I'm here all the time. Anyway. You don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no way around it. And it's just some character to kind of bridge the gaps every time we kill someone. Um, or if something happens, we have the story plot line keep moving along. Mm -hmm. um, if it wasn't for that, and it wasn't for just cost-effective reasons, I probably wouldn't do much in front of the camera. Okay. All I know is that I don't have to pay myself, so it's like, yeah, who cares? Like, I'll, I'll be in this part, I'll die here, I'll, I'll make a fool of myself. And I think I did a pretty good job in this movie. Um, there's some there's some funny scenes that I get to be a part of, which I'm yes, happy. Yes, I did. I, I, like I said earlier, I literally laughed out loud reading some of this, and I was just like, that's actually really funny. <laughs> my boyfriend's like, what are you laughing at? I'm like, I'm in the business of reading. Don't, don't worry about I'm it. Reading my, I'm working right now. Go away. <laughs> and, and I know it's going to be rough, but I would love to get this out on Christmas Day or as close to as possible. That would be pretty cool. I just need everyone to leave me alone. As soon as we're done filming, uh -huh. it's like everyone get out for a solid week. Just stay away from me. Um, don't come back, you filthy animal. But I'm, I'm really hoping that we make our goal to do the uh, release party here, the premiere party. That would be really fun. But... um. At the very least, at the end of this, I hope everyone enjoys watching it with us. That's that's the main goal for me. Yeah. If you could pick the next movie to be in, like it doesn't have to be a movie that you already know that you could be in, like um, projects that are happening around this part of the world mm -hmm. or in our neck of the woods, what would you choose? What kind of movie would you want? Mm. That's a good question. You know what? An action movie. I want to do like an action movie. Not necessarily like Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, like pew pew, I'm doing like the Matrix on the sides of boulders and caves and shit, but I think an action movie would be pretty fun. Ooh, maybe something like The Bourne Identity. I love those movies. The Bourne movies? Those were good. Those, those were, were good. Really I really good. like Matt Damon a lot more than Ben Affleck. What? Ben Affleck's awesome. Um, you saw Batman, right? Because I only saw like 10 seconds, but I was like, fuck uh, that, I already see my life's going to be wasted. <laughs> those were not good movies. I mean, I liked him as Batman to an extent, but I like Christian Bale way better. And ah, Christian Bale, oh, you're gonna make me gag. Christian Bale that. wasn't even that good. So. They, okay, no, no. All right, okay. Christian Bale is awesome. He's a great actor. Have you seen what he does to himself? That's why you talk about like this way, Batman. He, I'm Batman. He gained and <laughs> lost like a hundred pounds for two roles. Like he went from the machinist, he was like 110 pounds, to Batman, oh, he yeah. went up to like 210. He was he just super packed skinny. on muscle, and that's all real. That was all him. Oh, they didn't twilight it when they airbrushed it all on their bellies? No, no. Like, the dirt, like, kind of the groundy parts, like, things that are not physically possible just by gaining and losing weight, obviously, or change somewhat. Okay. But his physical appearance, he dieted and exercised his way into those kind of shapes. Or he starved himself, basically, to get that skinny. 
and then That's the what rest. Like. Yes, yeah, he, he really does. Um, he doesn't do that anymore because it's very bad for your health, obviously. Um, he could very much hurt himself, and that thing is getting super sharp. It's getting super sharp. I'm trying to be careful not to break it. <laughs> that is impressively fast, too. How long do we get? What do you call it? You did it in 13 minutes. Okay, well, that I was talking. I was talking to you, so. That was pretty yeah. solid. I gotta say, I think that was uh, I was right on time. If not, that would have been way faster. See, so that's gonna that's gonna. That's pretty something. sharp. Yeah. You jab that in an eyeball, you ain't getting that back. The eyeball or the candy cane. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, you're gonna be murdered. Uh, for those of you watching, um, this was the first kind of holiday movie that I've ever thought about really doing. Um, and that was the first one I've ever wanted to do was a Christmas horror movie. Because I love horror and Christmas is a fun holiday for the most part. Yeah. But I think you could do with a lot more gory yeah. stuff and make a lot better. Like if we could add Christmas and Halloween and kind of mash them, I think that would make Christmas way better. And, you know, Halloween would have to kind of pick up its slack from Christmas being kind of boring, yeah. comparatively speaking. I think Halloween's way more fun for everyone. It is. I, I, I agree. I do like the lights and the warmth of Christmas and all that, but, I mean, I could really give or take getting or giving a bajillion friggin' presents anymore. Yeah, I'll buy so. you something year-round. If I like you, I'll buy you something here and there. Yeah. We don't need to, like, worry about a certain day of the year to do that. We should scare each other more instead. I, like I think that would be better. And I, I think they should have like Halloween Horror Nights year round. That would be cool. That would be awesome. You could do a different theme every month. <gasps> Maybe we should like go uh, rent a place at the museum and do the Krampus exhibit or something at Christmas next year. Ooh, that would be spooky. We can do it here. We could scare oh, here. we could. We'll set it all up. Heck yeah. Yeah. But um, after Christmas, obviously, there are mm -hmm. still so many more holidays. If you could make your own horror holiday movie, what holiday would you pick? And I'd like to hear you guys uh, let us know what you think, too. Easter. Easter. An Easter bunny murder. Because how the hell does an Easter bunny lay an egg? Oh, God, yeah. I've always wondered that. Like, <laughs> Whose idea was it? Like, Because everyone still wants to consider it you know, a religious holiday. But like, Jesus doesn't care about bunnies. I don't, uh -uh. I, maybe not like to an extent the, where they need to hide eggs. What does the rabbit represent during... Does is it does it represent anything during the holiday? No. Not that I know. I've been you Catholic for a, a little while my entire life. So I think they would have told me by now. Unless they're keeping it a really good secret. Like, I think South Park was the closest to revealing it. That the bunny was the original Pope. And that's why the hat goes like that. So yeah. it holds in the ears. Oh my gosh. Uh, but Sounds legit. The, the eggs, yeah, they don't make any sense. I don't like them. Um, yeah. The kids love them. Like, I love to head eggs for the family. Mm -hmm. But that's about it. Uh, candy's cool. Uh, we have a barbecue. That's always good. Okay. But nothing else, like, nothing reminds me of why we're supposed to be celebrating Easter. Especially not the bunny. Is this another pagan holiday, I suppose? Oh. Taken over by other things? Well, why are pagans thinking that rabbits are laying eggs? Why don't you, like, watch a rabbit once in we a while? We didn't come up with it. It was, like, the white Christian folk that sure, came up with that Sure, sure. Egg Ugh. coloring. Yeah, I did that. Actually, I think someone... It's not saying you personally some, did it. Someone <laughs> did it just because they had too many eggs. That's what I'm thinking happened. Like, they made a deal like, Oh, no! <laughs> you've got all this dye that you can't sell because mm -hmm. the guy over there making the wool is being a jerk. You've got all these eggs that are going to go rotten pretty soon. Why don't you color them for me and we'll sell them for like, a whole lot of money. And then we'll tell people that you need to hide them or Jesus will find you. Which I don't understand why that's a bad thing, but, you know, we'll figure it out. A Jesus coming and getting vengeance on you for not hiding eggs? That's what I was thinking. Blasphemous. But there's, there's a rabbit involved, so it's okay. Yeah. No, no, but... I, I love that idea of a Easter themed horror movie, and that'd be pretty cool. My favorite one that's released right now um, is another indie film called Thanks Killing, which uh, if you haven't seen it, it's a killer turkey. It's, like it's a an old movie, right? It's pretty old. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's like 90s, early 2000s, um, and it's about a group of college uh, kids going back to their home city after or for a Thanksgiving break, for some reason, and they stumble upon an ancient curse of a killer turkey from an Indian tribe who murders their parents and a lot of their friends, and, oh my god, it's hilarious. It's a very, really crudely done turkey puppet. Is that the one where, I? because I want to say I've seen it before, is that the one where they're like, two older people getting it on or whatever at the beginning of the movie and the turkey kills them? Uh, or they're um, in a car doing something and the turkey kills them? Like nighttime or whatever? You know, it starts out like pilgrims, like a pilgrim lady's running, and her boob mm -hmm. falls out for some reason, and then he murders her. 
Okay. And then there's uh, what other scenes? Maybe I haven't seen it. Then I want to say that I've seen it, but maybe I haven't seen it. I think you need to watch this one. Thanks Killing is probably one of the best holiday slasher movies ever because its killer is hilarious and a turkey, which is slowly killing America anyways. Because I'm pretty Cabo, sure, Cabo. pretty sure, like we said, salmonella and turkey is getting a lot more Americans than we assume it would. The more you know. <laughs> the more you know. But, um, that being said, I would love to have, by the end of like my career, a whole list of all the different holidays and different horror movies attached to it. Like The next one I was thinking was a 4th of July one. That would um, be cool. I was thinking something we could do for that one, which we have plenty of time now, like in between now and then, oh, yeah. to plan that out and not just kind of spring it on people. Which uh, was not my intent. I didn't think anyone really like have time to make a movie. Well, you know so many people, and you and Frankie are like such nice, good-hearted people. Like, who wouldn't want to work with you guys? Honestly, I mean, so I, I'm not surprised so many people jumped on it. I just figured everyone was busy. I figured we get like five or six people together for an afternoon, and we'd make something really short. But then, as soon as more people wanted to be involved, I didn't want to turn anyone down because this was just about having fun, and everyone getting yeah. together, and. Um, if we can use this so everyone has something good to show on their their reel or their IMDb credit, which you're on there already, if you yes. can check it out. Oh, you put you added it to my IMB, yeah. IMDb? Yeah. I, I am I'm in Yes, I have an IMDb. I am I God damn, you're messing up. I am, I am That was I my am, issue earlier. <laughs> IMDb. There IMDb. we go. IMDb, yeah. IDMB? IMDb. IMDb. Internet movie database. Whatever I am that. <laughs> <laughs> I pay for the expensive one. I have to. You have to have that. Oh, to add other people's stuff. Yeah. No, just to be able to like check and like. If you oh. go to Internet Movie Database, because this is a, a movie podcast, guys. This is about filmmaking more than it's just review stuff, which is why we we haven't reviewed anything. We just like said, oh, we like that. <laughs> but if you are serious about filmmaking and you want to kind of plug yourself in, get a pro account for IMDb. You can go through Amazon, you have a 30 day free trial, to, no I'm not lying to you. Um, you can literally go to companies and find their contact information, it's all listed there. Mm -hmm. You can find other companies they've worked with. If somebody wants you to work on their project and you're like, oh I don't really know you, you can see people they've worked with before and get a feel for that. Don't be afraid to reach out, people love to talk about other people, they love to give them compliments if they like them. They absolutely love to bash people if they don't like them. So either way, you're going to get some information or they might not pick up. That's about the worst that's going to happen, guys. Yeah. If you want a certain actor or actress that you think, I can probably get them for my movie. This might be something up their alley. They're either their information or their uh, managers or booking agent will mm -hmm. be on there as well. Yeah. IMDb is a huge resource uh, to connect you with people that can help you either further your career or that you can work with um, to help each other you know, kind of take the next step. And I'm a little ashamed of myself for not, you know, hopping on there sooner and not, you know, really getting my credits together. You know, it's, it was bad. It was my shame, fault. Shame, shame. But at the same time, um, we've been doing all this to kind of build our own group where we are mm -hmm. instead of kind of reach out for everywhere. But it's nice to know that there are so many local people in your area, probably in a two-mile, or not two-mile, excuse me, a two-hour radius mm -hmm. that is easily accessible for you to work with. And you will see their credits. You will see how dedicated they are just by checking something as simple as I am to be out. Mm -hmm. So definitely I would recommend checking that out. Um, you don't need to have it to add your credits to whatever you need to. Okay, I thought you did for some reason. I thought yeah. you had to have like a paid account to be able to add your own credits. So I was like, eh, if I'm in your movie, please add me. <laughs> no, no, I'm pretty almost 100% sure you can add your own credits at least, or at least fix your own. You can't add okay. others to theirs. Um, and you can have a project on there. You can add your own project to IMDb. Um, as long as you go through their steps. And they're very simple guys. They ask for basic information. Um, they ask for maybe who's involved, if you can add that right away. And then they ask for a couple things of proof. And the only proof they asked for for this movie was the Facebook page. Oh, and okay. Usually they say, oh, we need three forms of proof, and it can't just be, um, what, was, what was something that, damn it, something super mundane that made no sense. Like, why would that be proof anyway? I think it was, um, <laughs> Uh, an article like for a blog article or something like that. Oh, really? But I was like, that seems like it would be fine. If I was <coughs> writing about it, it's probably real. But that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, just know that you might need three ways to prove that your project is real for IMDb. Um, they did have an issue with our budget, which is zero. So I couldn't add zero, so I put a $1,000 on there. Okay. Just to say, like, oh, there is some sort of budget. It's fine, guys. 
Even that, they're like, well, this seems too low to make a movie. It really isn't when everything that we're doing is kind of cobbled together, especially from amazing, um, talented people that we're working with. Everyone's kind of donating their time and their yeah. efforts. If they have something they can bring that is, you know, Christmas related, like their talent of making, you know, shanks. Um, that's all that stuff helps. Yeah, it also it does help. It really yeah, it's does, an yeah. important role in the movie to have a tasty shank. So. <laughs> yeah, we needed those, and I don't want to make them because that hurts my mouth after a while. Oh. It's too much sugar. I love them. I don't. I don't care for that much sugar. Well, I don't have to eat the whole thing. It's only like a quarter of a quarter of the way of it. A <laughs> so, quarter of a quarter. Yeah, because I'm only a quarter of the way half. Sh- quarter of the way through it. It's not like I go all the way through my it. My God, so, that's a quarter lot. of a quarter, like an eighth. I'm going through an, an eighth. Of eighth. It. Nothing like an eighth of a can of cane. Yeah, but that's like at least eight times. So that's a whole candy. Very true. That's okay. Uh, candy cans are delicious, so it's okay. <laughs> it makes it better. Yeah. And then real quick, I woke up and saw the notification. Gigi was live. I thought I slept through Wednesday. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, no. Tomorrow I'm going to see Christmas Clyde at Silent Night, Deadly Night. Oh, I love that. Ooh. I was so like, across due to the test. That's so cool. Richard, that is awesome, man. That is unbelievably cool. And um, what time are you watching that? Because Tomorrow, the girls are going live early. Downtown. Uh, downtown to talk shit about the Christmas. No, I'm just not talk shit about it. Maybe. But to commentate on the Christmas parade for their live show. So it's going to be a two-hour yeah. perpetual R instead of a one-hour. Um, I do apologize for our cross-posting people because we can't do that tomorrow. Yeah. But um, I hope they understand because it was a pretty big opportunity. We want to make sure we hopped on. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I'm excited for it. I'm excited to do it, too, because, like, we already had a plan what we are going to do this week, and then a couple of nights ago, we hit it up, and he's like, hey, you guys think you want to be in the Christmas parade this year? We've got a booth, and we're like, yes. It was, <laughs> it was super last second, guys. Yeah. We're going to be right next to the rest of the media, the rest of the news coverage, so that's really cool. We're bringing oh, yeah. the lights out. We're bringing the um, pop-up so we keep the rain off of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will have a fully charged phone because that's the only way we can stream. Um, out there. Hopefully the internet connection will hold. Um, Ooh, that's true, because there's going to be like a ton of people in the same area all using their phones at the same time. So tell them, we'll tell them to knock that shit off, and we will be the ones doing it for them. Tasty shakes. I have a whole tree full of them. To everyone. Just to everyone. <laughs> Get off your phone. Get off your phone. <laughs> so, speaking of tree, too, that was our first donated gift for the movie. Is oh, yeah. The tree in here, guys. Not this one to my... that way. But yeah, to her side. Yeah, to her side. Um, Not this good. I don't know why I'm looking at that. I know it's over there. Touching the tree. There's no. It's, there's no way it could be over here to me. It's impossible. Anyway, because I'm dumb. <laughs> like earlier when yeah. I was all like, oh, I should put the chair there because then the chair. Be- oh wait, that's not a real tree. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fake tree. We all fake tree. <laughs> but moonshine, Rob, the guy who donated uh, cards against uh, cards against humanity or moonshine against humanity. Uh, He's also going to be donating another Moonshine-based game. What? Uh, it's very soon. Don't worry. You will be moonshine involved. Moonshine Against Humanity. Oh, were you, you didn't play that one with us. No. It was on Tony's show. Oh, man. I won. I won so hard at that moonshine game. Moonshine Against Humanity. Oh, there's more Moonshine coming. Don't worry. But he was nice enough to stop in at the studio and donate a tree for the movie. Oh. So we're going to decorate the hell out of that thing, and it's going to get blood on it. And hopefully someone will get murdered in it. I cannot wait. Uh, thank um, you so much for the tree. <laughs> I mean, you've read the script. You know what happens. So if the weather right now keeps going, there's going to be a lot of changes. Like, we already know that. Yeah. Which is fine. We can figure it out. I am looking forward to those kind of challenges just because this is something... Uh, it's all creative. Everyone has yeah. to kind of throw in whatever they can do to make it work. And that's just another thing that sometimes you can't uh, plan or schedule around. Rain happens whenever it yeah. wants. And there's not a lot, but there are some scenes outside, guys. And there's no coverage around here, uh, at least mm-hmm. in the areas we wanted to film. So... Whatever happens, kind of happens. Whoever, if someone can't make it, we'll kind of work around it. We have other people who have been coming forward saying they want to be a part of this. And I don't want to add too many more people just because um, it's it's more difficult at this point since the script is out there. Yeah. In fact, I thought one individual wasn't going to be able to make it. I don't know if she's watching right now, but I'm really glad you are um, going to be here at least Sunday. And I actually filled her role with someone else who was in another role. Uh-oh. So now I have to call that person and tell them. Get under, under studies. Get I'm, a backup. Well, it's not just that. It's that I got one of our other actresses to play another role mm-hmm. to fill that role because it was more important. Yeah, so kind of messed And now I need up. to tell her, like, the other person's going to be here. Can we please have them do their role and I'll have something better for you? And I don't know how to explain that properly because this was all just supposed to be for fun. And I don't want anyone to feel left out, especially since both people asked me around the same time 
right. to be in it. It's just one person that I misunderstood that they could make it versus they couldn't. So I was like, okay, I'll make mm-hmm. sure I take care of this now. I don't have to worry about it later. So it's on me that I have to fix this problem, but I can fix it. I know how. I just have to get um, a certain somebody on board. And she probably already knows who I'm talking about because she knows the first part of the story. And then the second part happened basically like 20 minutes before you got here. Oh, so I'm like, oh. surprise. <laughs> but that's how movies are made. Very difficultly oh, yeah. and very much um, thrown together. But I'm going to check the Christmas party massacre page. I know we keep glancing down. Like, are we still going? We're still going. We're doing great. Sort of. I don't know how this is happening. Okay. I'm going to that out. Because sometimes it says we're going live. Sometimes it's like a gray button on top. Oh, okay. So I don't know what's going. Uh, Joe, don't burn yourself on that tree. Ha, ha, ha. The tree is not oh, on that fire. Sorry, sorry. It's on the fire. Oh, wait. It's this way. Yeah, right there. Ow, ow. Put your hands in the fire. Don't touch it. I love it this hot. backdrop. It was a good idea to use this. I was going to save it for your guys' what do you call it, though? The reading thing. We do it too. We'll do it too. Yeah, we'll use as much as we can because yeah. it's a cool backdrop. I like it. It's, yeah. it's nice. It's cozy. It's nice and warm. We see green right now, but no, I see a even Christmas though we're looking tree. back and saying, oh my God, that's so nice. I <laughs> see a wreath and I see skittle. a clock. I also see <laughs> a fireplace and some wooden doors over here next to me. I love lamp. I love lamp. No, I think it's really cool. It is cool. And uh, it was super simple, guys. They have free, uh, copyright free stuff on YouTube. Uh, so you go. Look on your, whatever you're using, either a desktop or, or sorry, a PC or Mac. I'm using a Mac. So there was a Mac to YouTube downloader. You type in the link to whatever video it is, and mm-hmm. it'll give you an option to download it. Mm-hmm. Um, so do that. Make sure you can use the rights for it. And if you have a green screen and you want to use that, it pops up very quickly. Just um, a Christmas fire uh, loop, and that's all it was. And it's, I believe, an hour long. So that's you can use good. it for, yeah, for quite a few things. Yeah. There's one that's 10 hours of just a fire burning. Oh, So that's okay. cool. That's, I listen to when I go to bed at night because it either has to be dark and quiet or if there's, like now how it's raining, you can hear it. I can sleep to that sometimes, uh, but usually I'm a very light sleeper, so any little like outside noises like so, yeah. or around the house, they wake me up. But if I put it on that, um, a lot of them are like 10 hours too. It's thunderstorms with the rain and the lightning, but it's a black screen, so you don't see any rain. It just looks like your TV's off. Oh, nice. But you just get the outside storm noises, or you get a beach noise or something, but I love those things. Weird enough, I need it pitch black, or I need to be playing some horror stories. Because there are people who will just read horror stories off the mm-hmm. internet. Either they're creepypastas or they're urban legends, or sometimes they go to Reddit and find true stories. Okay. And they will just read those stories out, and that's all the video is. Sometimes there'll be like pictures that match it, but I won't pay attention to that. I just let it play in the background so there's noise. And that's my version of like a bedtime story, is horror stories. I love hearing like scary stuff when I go to sleep. Okay. I like to throw on those like, is this a real video of some poltergeist activities? And then I'll let that play in the background and I fall asleep to that. Wow. Okay. That's my favorite way to fall asleep. I don't know why. It just is. Okay. And horror, horror has always been my favorite stuff. Horror, not horrors, is no judgment. Amazing. <laughs> There's a couple of horrors in the movie too, sort of. There's some bloody girls. That's pretty much. It's an 80s yeah. slash. It's supposed to be in a nod to 80s slashers, and every 80s slasher I've ever seen has that one naked girl gets murdered. It's like, oh my god, I can't believe him. He went, oh my god, I know, and then she dies. She gets murdered. Or she so runs sad. and falls and then bounces back up from her big boobies and then falls again. Again. And then she dies. Then she meets the president of the United States. Again. Of America. And she has her Dr. Pepper again. No, I'm sorry. That just reminded me of Forrest Gump. I, you're t- yeah, I started. I must have had me about 15 Dr. Dr. Peppers. Peppers. Oh, my gosh. I love that God movie. God <laughs> But, um, oh, man. I forgot I was going to say that. Oh, I, love, I love Forrest Gump. It's such movie. a good movie. Um. This is uh, this is not our first project that we had planned, Mm-mm. but this one just kind of jumped the line just because of holiday and just because of, you know, opportunity. Mm-hmm. The only reason this is even getting attention is just because we kind of had to seize this moment. Mm-hmm. What is the other one we're working on, though? You want to talk about that at all? One Night Stand of the Dead by Miguel Rodriguez. Oh, my I, God. You should meet though. that guy. He's so cool. <laughs> He's a real dick. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, next month. Gonna be filming One Night Stand of the Dead, Lauren and myself. It's supposed to be a horror comedy. It sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm excited to do that one too. It's it's supposed to be longer than the 
Oh, or definitely. The Christmas yeah. massacre party movie, but I I'm excited. Yeah, guys, that one we're aiming for a 90 minute feature. Like, that one's going to be, for sure. Yeah. This one, we're just seeing how long we can get, honestly. I'm not, I have no expectations of actual timing as far as how long I want it to be. I just I want to get the footage. I want everyone to be able to do the scenes to the best of their ability without, you know, bogging everything down because we only have two days. Yeah. Um, Time limit like nobody's business. So. Which, is, which is true, which is fine too because I, yeah. I trust everyone's going to do a great job. I already know it. Um, but by the end of it, it could be 20 minutes. It could be 80 to 90 minutes. It could be a feature length. And I won't be sad either way. We are we are doing a little bit of a pre-sale on it right now, guys. Five bucks, you get the VOD as soon as it goes live. Uh, if 50 people donate ten dollars or more, we will do a premiere party here at the studio um, for when it's done. Mm -hmm. We have the projector and whatnot ready to go. Oh, we all sit together and have popcorn and watch it. Yeah, I think that'd be really fun. That'd be fun. Um, and it's just another good way to keep movies going. Like if you have an opportunity to make money off of your movie, guys, kind of seize that opportunity, even if it's a short. Um, one of my favorite um, filmmakers and kind of knowledge peoples, I don't know what you call him, I guess he's a teacher to me at this point. Is he a point. guru? Yeah, he would be a guru. guru. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. His name's Alex Ferrari. He does the indie film podcast, guys. Indie film hustle. Um, this guy is insane with how much work he puts out. Because not only is he making his podcast and his tutorial videos and master classes um, for his students and for his like community. Mm -hmm. He's also making his own feature films at the same time. Oh, wow. So he does maybe three episodes a week for the podcast, like three, one hour to, well, like 30 minutes to one hour videos okay. uh, slash um, podcasts. He does his master courses, which range from master courses on just lenses to one social media website to push and how to, how to market on that one site to um, a master class on one director and how they um, get their images they want. And... After that, he also makes movies like his... The first one that I heard of his, which I really liked, was called This Is Meg. And it is about a an aging actress in Hollywood. And he gets stars from Reno 911 to be in it. Oh, okay. And uh, the entire thing is actually an improvised movie. It's a feature film that was improvised with just certain plot points that had to be hit. Okay. To move forward. So at the same time, he made it for a low budget, promoted himself, self-distributed, so he'd make money right away. And that's kind of stuff I wanted to model after. And if you guys can do that for yourself, you know, build buzz about whatever project you're trying to do, we find your own niche. For ours at this time, it's 80s slasher, Christmas horror people, mm -hmm. and just people who like those kind of gory slasher movies. That's kind of the niche we're trying to hit right now. And um, if you can find your own, it doesn't have to be even that wide, because that's kind of still broad. Uh, I would say, like, we could have narrowed that down even more, and I'm trying to. So I just target the people who just really want to see this kind of movie. Um, find your niche out there. If um, I'm, I'm looking around this room right now, like there's a plushy Cthulhu right over there from um, Silky Soapworks. Mm -hmm. Really awesome stuff. If you based a movie on someone, or a short movie based on someone who makes um, plushies, mm -hmm. and maybe they have a specific design, you can make a five, ten minute movie, throw it on Vimeo for a dollar, and you're not gonna make um, millions of dollars. You're not gonna Titanic it, but you can. Make enough money to keep making the next project, guys. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be broke while you do this. And that's what we're trying to get to the point of. We're trying to make it a little bigger than just, you know, $1 movies like that. Yeah. But uh, we're finally at the point where we can hopefully start making money off the art, which I'm very much excited for. And I'm glad to have all the people we have involved um, to be on that road with us. And hopefully we can all be on the next level we want to do. Uh -huh. But that's the goal. That's the goal is just to be able to do what we want to do and make money from that and continue to take care of the people who are taking care of us. Yeah. Ugh, I'm getting sick over here. Oh, you're getting all worked up. It's okay. You know no, why to pick it. cold. It's cold in here. It's just cold. The yeah. fire. I know, it's not even working. I don't get that. We had, um, <laughs> we had the fake fire going on the big TV during the uh, party. Oh, did for, you? Yeah. And I was going to put an electric heater pointing out so there'd be heat coming <laughs> from it. And I'm like, nah, that's too cheesy. I so thought I'm gonna it would have been next funny. Time. Next time, next, next time. Next time. But we are coming up to 45 minutes. We usually only go for like an hour. Or we only usually go for like half an hour for this oh. one. So um, I'm really glad you are on today. Thank it makes you it for way having easier. me. <laughs> um, we'll probably start doing longer episodes too. It's just that we're kind of doing a little shorter format right now. There's a lot more cool stuff coming to All Things Film that I'm working on for the new year. So there will be a lot more content from this channel, not mm -hmm. just the live stuff on Wednesdays. But I hope you will stick with us on Wednesdays, guys. Uh, 7 o'clock as always, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Mm -hmm. Joe will be live for you tomorrow at 6 p.m.
Pacific Standard Time for the Bakersfield uh, Christmas Parade. Yes. Along with Lauren, so tune in for that, guys. Yes. Um, no purple backdrop drop for that one. Mm -mm. The backdrop will be a little better, I guess, technically. I mean, a little more effort into it, I guess, than just painting. Maybe a little more effort. And, you know, full on ensembles of bands and like huge floats. All the bougie stuff, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I believe last year there was like. 500 motorcycles or something. Uh, like kids whatever. screaming everywhere. Those kids. Bastards. No, I'm just kidding. It's really fun. I love the parade. My sister was in it last year with her marching band. It was oh, really cool. cool to see. I don't know if she's doing it this year. She's at new school. But um, I cannot wait to go myself. I'm going to have me a hot chocolate, probably mix in a little bit of alcohol, and scream at some bands. I'm going to let you guys do all the work, and I will share the best I can, even though I am in Facebook jail. So, guys, tomorrow, Aww. 6 p.m., Share the hell out of um, the Girls Gore and Jen live stream for me, because I can't do it myself. I, I would do it. Girls go, Girls Gore and go into the Christmas parade. <laughs> Boom! That was solid. I we always that. have to find a third G when we're doing different There's shit. Definitely so. a G in there. And then uh, next week I will be having uh, Philip and Raister from Night Mistress on as guests oh, for this hey. show. Um, hopefully making sure because uh, he couldn't make it today though. Oh. The pass between here and LA is just ridiculous. It's oh, snowing. it's only gonna get worse. Yeah, so it's only gonna get worse the closer it gets to the holidays. It's yeah. just horrible. And the weather is not helping any. I mean, mm -hmm. rain in that grapevine is not safe. Even if it's warm out there, it's still. No one yeah. knows how to drive, especially not in that area. It's all, all muddy. Assholes. It's terrible. Yeah. But hopefully, all things considered, guys, we will still have guests for you next week as well. Um, I'm going to hop back on live sometime the week before for pre-production. So okay. if you want to hop on with me, it's not going to be like a scheduled time. So whenever you're here or whenever I decide to go live, we'll just have it on there. So you guys know we are working for the movies, I promise <laughs> you. From now on, you will see probably one random live stream on this channel of just us working on movies, uh, which is a lot of fun to me because I had fun last oh, time. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it. I, I saw yeah, when you're sitting there. And not even talking to the audience. It was not. It was not for you guys. That was just for me to be accountable <laughs> for working on it. And it would be nice to have someone else hop on there and be accountable with me. And I already know I can count on you and tell me make those shanks and uh, to test out some murder murder of people. And even before we started, I threw another scene at um, Joe here that she has to film now. And I just kind of volunteered you for it too. I apologize. It's okay. Because uh, it just a little heads up, Becca also from Night Mistress and she's going to be a host of one of our new shows is going to be in the movie now. We were able to work it out for her schedule to work. And I was like, yeah, because Joe's going to do it. It's fine. Yeah, we'll make her do another scene. I love she that doesn't, guy. She doesn't have anything else to do. Joe doesn't have a life. So we'll make her life. work and work and work. So I'm going to need you here a little earlier on Sunday. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Sunday <laughs> yeah. we film, not this Sunday. Don't worry. Right. Yeah. No, I get you. But, uh, thank you for that, by the way. Yeah. Just, uh, I got you, bro. Boom. But that <laughs> is going to wrap it up for us today, guys. Um, I'll let you finish off. You want to give a shout out to your sponsors just to give them an extra little boost? Oh, yeah, for and sure. Uh, I will turn this off. Go right for it. That. Uh, Girls Born Gin actually has quite a few sponsors for the month of December. Um, our following sponsors we'd like to thank on the show All Things Film. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, Silky Soap Works. Uh, Cloud Nine Candles. What's this? How do you pronounce that specimens one? Uh, diaf. Diaf. Damn it. Diaf. From Moisenized. It's really cool. We'll it's a really link. cool expense. If you go to Girls Gore and Jane, you can find the link for it. Um, basically, they're just like little skeletal remains of animals that are all nice and preserved. Um, <laughs> we also have a Naughty Cat Apparel, uh, French Toasty Good Designs. I know there's other ones. The Kitchen Witch Gourmet. There's a lot. Diaphanized. Diaphanized specimens. Check them out. They're great. Um, I think that's all I had. I, I want to say that's all I had. We have a lot. It's kind of hard to keep track unless I have a paper in front of my face. But. No, it's all good. I threw you on the spot. I just want to make sure they get an extra little shout out. Well, thank you. I Especially because you being awesome playing on tonight. Thank you. So if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, check out Girls Gore and Gin. Uh, their page, if you want to look at all the different sponsors we have for the month, it's very early. Uh, well, it's kind of early for Christmas shopping. Not quite. You're not in the danger zone yet. But uh, if you want to get a head start on uh, Christmas shopping for others or yourself, check out one of those sites. And you will not be disappointed, I promise. Um, are we good? We're good. So I'll see you guys tomorrow night on Girls Gore and Jen if you watch. And Miguel, we'll see you guys next week on All Things Films. Boy. Boy. That was so rolling.